Good morning, everyone. I'd like to take a moment and show you something that really got me excited about using Enscape this morning, and that is adding video textures to your projects. Now, this is in the 2.9 Enscape preview, so it's not fully baked yet. I found some idiosyncrasies, which I'll also discuss, but if you'll be patient, I think we'll get something close and something that's really useful now. Uh, so the first thing I want you to notice is that in the background of this Revit project, we're going to use this canvas and apply the image. Now I've applied an, a still image to this and using the technique that I've showed before of using a model pattern to adjust the location of an image, it seems like the eventual video pattern has an origin that I haven't quite figured out yet. So I don't know how to do that. But um, I think that's uh, something that I wanted to point out up front. When you, when you add the video pattern, it seems like the origin is different than the origin of an image that you might use or a model pattern. The first thing that we need to talk about is rest mode in Enscape. And rest mode is the ability for things to appear to animate. And then the moment you stop moving, it freezes again. So notice how that water seems to undulate, but when we stop moving, the water stops. We need to turn off rest mode so that things appear to animate all the time. And to do that, we're gonna go back to Revit and then go to the general settings. So here we are in Revit. Select the general settings option, then go to performance and uncheck the option for rest mode. Now we'll go back to Enscape. Now you'll notice that the water is appearing to undulate without even moving around. Now keep in mind, this is going to make your uh, graphic card fan spin up and it's gonna to start to make a bit of noise because you're having to cool the graphic card. I suspect this is a little bit more compute intensive, but that's the first step. The next step is to add the video path to the image. So now let's go back to Revit. We're going to select this painting, or in this case, it's gonna end up becoming a TV screen. And we're gonna look at the material properties for this image. Selecting the appearance tab, you can select the image and see what the eventual size of this video screen needs to be. So in our case, it's four foot 11 by three foot three. Now the video path is added via the identity option and I've already teed it up here. So let's take a moment and talk about the formatting for adding an animated texture in Revit. You can't do it through the appearance tab. You have to do it through the identity tab. And actually it has to be in the description field, but I wanted to place it in the comments field for just a moment so we can talk about proper formatting. The first thing you want to notice is at the beginning and the end of this entire description, there are brackets and that's really important. And then after those brackets is the word video and after the word video is a colon. That's a really important part. Then you notice that there's an absolute path to the video. In this case, it's an MP4 file. And then we have 4.92 that corresponds to the width of the image. That's four foot 11. And then after that, we have three foot three or 3.33. And then after that, we have a zero. Zero corresponds to the rotation of this uh, video path. Now notice between the MP4 and the 4.92 and the 3.33 and the zero, there is a vertical bracket there. I don't exactly know what you call that, but that's what it is. Now we're gonna take this entire value and I'm just going to copy it and paste it here into the description field. And then I'm gonna hit the apply key. Then we're gonna go back to Enscape and see the result. If we move over here, we can now see this video path and it's gonna to get to the end. It's about a 30 second sequence. And when it gets to the end, it's just going to repeat. If we go into a low light condition, you'll notice that at first it appears the video is not illuminated, okay? And the way to fix that is we go back to Revit and we just check the box for self-illumination. So I'm gonna tab back to Revit and then go to the appearance tab and select this option for self-illumination. It doesn't take a lot because the size of this image is quite large, so I'm just gonna set it to a value of five. Now notice that the image is still selected uh, for both self-illumination and the low light condition. It seems to just overwrite these image settings. You don't have to remove the image setting. You can actually keep it if you'd like, 
but the video is going to override it. So now we've checked this option for self-illumination. We're going to select apply. And then let's go back to Enscape. Now, when we look at this video in a low light condition, the video is going to appear to illuminate. All right. And that's pretty much it. I think this is really cool. Uh, unfortunately, there's no sound here, so we can't be inside of Enscape and watch TV yet, but that'll probably come in the next release. Uh, I think this is really useful. It's really exciting. I think in addition to interesting videos, we can have things like animated fire. We could have things like uh, animated water or vertical waterfalls, that sort of thing. So I hope this has been useful. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And now I'm just going to go in here and I think I'm going to watch TV for a moment. So I'm just going to go over here and watch TV. Oh, that's better. Okay. See you guys later.